Presidential aspirant of the Young Progressives Party, Malik Ado Ibrahim, is promising to tackle the persisting national insecurity in the country if voted into power next year. The 59-year-old humanitarian and energy expert says he will also be using his wealth of experience to explore the use of renewable energy to solve Nigeria's chronic uh, power shortages with a focus on uh, also tackling poverty. Ado Ibrahim also describes as local champion the Kogi state governor Yahya Bello, who hails from the same state as himself. Ado Ibrahim, who is the second son of the Ohinoi of Ibra land, uh, said only those who are satisfied with the performance of Bello will support his presidential bid. Nobody running Nigeria, a state, a senator, a legislator, can come out in public and walk a street. Nobody. So we must be very careful about who we bring into power. What I would like to be able to do is create the kind of job opportunities most leaders find when they have high unemployment. Infrastructure projects will be gone through. Um, this would allow us to, to be more inclusive, bring people into the workforce, and then have that, that money circulate. So roads, bridges, power systems, um, uh, to, to, to really readjust our foundation as a nation needs manpower. We have the youth, and that youthfulness is great in building things. And so my, uh, my def the program that I have uh, ready to, to, to bring to the fore is about getting people to work and pushing the economy that way. It's an umbrella against a broom. And I don't believe that that's what the country needs. We need an opposition. We need people who put our politicians' feet to fire. YPP can do that. Well, let's speak to the man you just saw in that clip, Malik Ado Ibrahim, who joins us live in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. From the racetrack, Formula One, to yes. Aso Villa in mm -hmm. Abuja. Mm -hmm. And that's your plan. Yeah. You're so big on energy, electricity. Yes. But Nigerians have heard that over, over and, and over, over again. again. Yeah. Every administration promises power and then they celebrate mega kilowatts added at the end of the day. Um, mm. What is different? What are you going to do differently? Why should Nigerians believe you? Yes. Um, it takes courage. It takes courage to be able to do things differently. Um, it's easy to come into a situation and um, uh, you know, sort of look at it and say, okay, they have 4,000 megawatts now, mm -hmm. um, we'll buy more turbines, we'll, we'll do all these things. But if you've never been in the power business, and if you haven't been in renewables especially, um, you won't understand the modernity of power. We're blessed with a lot of sunshine. We have wind corridors in, in, the, in the northwest of this country. We have uh, the ability to generate energy from God-given elements, not from man-made things. The rest of the world is pivoting towards a renewable, um, uh, su sustainable power, and we seem to be content uh, with what we have. Um, you know, this is not this administration's issue. This has been every administration that has run Nigeria. And um, my focus is on, well, oil and gas was what we had. The world has left oil and gas and is going into renewables. The electric cars now, there's electric transportation. Um, people are running their homes on, on, on solar power. Um, Nigeria is blessed. Africa is blessed with sun. And my intention is to, to take that and make that probably one of the best ways to get un uh, the unemployment numbers back, uh, back to um, some respectable number. Renewables give us that, and we can do that very easily in Nigeria. Very easily? Very you easily, yes. How easily will you tackle Nigeria's security challenges that seem to be taking a whole yes. new, you know, troubling dimension with public facilities and institutions uh, being attacked. Yes. I mean, you, I'm sure you're aware of what's been happening in Kaduna State. Absolutely. And as we speak today, Kaduna State remains under the bombardment of, uh, you know, terrorists. And you've been outside the country for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. How, to what extent, really, do you understand the peculiarities of mm -hmm. the Nigerian environment? Whether well, you're talking economy, security, you know, uh, society as a whole. I think the, the, the big thing that I think I can bring into the Nigerian political environment, I'm not a politician. Um, what I see is the next president of Nigeria needs to be the chief executive officer of this country. Um, we need to look at how we uh, change the way Nigeria is, is set up. You see people saying they want to manage the resources of this country. Every president has managed the oil and gas. We don't produce anything. We don't produce anything. So 
what we need to do is figure out what we're best at. And Nigeria has probably 64 million hectares of arable land. We can be the breadbasket of the world. It needs courageous leadership to be able to pivot away from what we used to be, which is an agro economy. We've went to oil and gas. We need to pivot back. There's yeah, a the, the question is exactly how you're going to do that. But oh, my major concern, of course, is security. Yes. How are you going to fix that? If, if you look at the security infrastructure of the country, we, we first have to realize that we are undermanned. We are severely undermanned. We're 200 million people, and we have circa 150,000 uh, men and women in the armed forces. We need to recruit better. We need to pay better. We need to give them better welfare, arm them better, get more modern tools into this game. Because we're not fighting conventional war anymore. Mm. We're not fighting um, another country. We're fighting an asymmetrical warfare right now. Mm. And that means the, 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 the measure you use to fight your enemy is completely different. Your jets are too far up to do anything. You need to be down on the ground. There's technology that allows you to do that. You look at a comedian that is now president of Ukraine, mm -hmm. dealing with a KGB agent that yep. is a nuclear power. And he's yep. using technology. And he's keeping them at bay. Okay. He's using drones. So we, can, we just have to retool ourselves as a nation. And I believe that if you haven't experienced that, if you haven't been in the military industrial complex like I have, if you don't know the sort of things that you can do to modernize your armed forces mm -hmm. and give them the strength to perform, we're going nowhere. When it comes to politics in Nigeria, the platform and the role of war chests in executing election campaign in the country cannot be underestimated. Absolutely not. You're running on the, on the platform of the YPP. Yes. And uh, what are your chances? And do you have the war chest to execute uh, a, a, an electioneering uh, campaign for the president? I mean, you're facing the likes of other aspirants, uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankunso, Anatiku, Peter Obi, uh, Tinubu, uh, just to mention a few. Yes. What are your chances? We all have deep pockets. Yes, um, I am not a great fan of the politics of money. Um, cerebral, well-thinking um, visionaries must be able to take the, the country out of the morass it is in right now. Mm -hmm. Money is great, but let me put it straight to the public. These people you've all mentioned are politicians. Mm -hmm. They're not businessmen. They probably made their money through politics. And if you make your money through politics and you have those deep pockets, where did the money come from? I don't believe that Nigeria is looking for somebody with deep pockets anymore. We're looking for somebody to get us out of this mess. You must be a vis visionary. You must have energy. You must have foresight. And most of all, today, you must have empathy for your people. And Nigerians are missing that right now. Things happen, nobody says sorry. Things happen, nobody gets fired. That has to change. Leadership right. and courage requires that we do that. Absolutely. Well, not, eno best. not enough time to talk about mm -hmm. your grouse with Yahya Bello, but we'll do that another time. Uh, Prince Malik Ado Ibrahim is a presidential aspirant of the YPP Young Progressives Party. Thank you for joining us. Uh,